Uh, hi, good morning. Uh, I'm Naresh. I represent Team Tatwa here. Uh, I'm CEO of the company. Uh, and our solution is a used car platform which provides deep insights to uh, the used car buyers and sellers on what we call as current state analytics. Right? And every time I, I go to a, uh, our first presentation, it's like, used car market? Really? Is there still something needs to be solved in that market? Is it it like used car, all things are already done. But no, it, it still is a big problem, especially in the geographies where you know, these markets are still evolving. It does mean a lot to those, uh, those 82 million middle class people who are coming into these developing geographies. So what do we mean by that? What has happened over a period of time in last 11 years in most developing economies, the new cars have come in, the cars from uh, Korea, Japan, USA, but the ecosystem around that, the information systems which were supposed to be built together with these new cars which came into the market, didn't keep that pace. That means you're getting the newer cars, you're getting everything that is new from a technology point of view, but you're not getting the environment built around that. Now, together with that, the economic growth built a huge middle class. By 2030, the middle class in the Asia pack is supposed to be 50% of world population. So, and this, these are the people who make anywhere between four to eight K. So for them, buying a used car is still two to three years of their saving, which is going into buying something very significant. So that's the evolution of a common man in Indian landscape. About 2000, they were just ambitious and, and, and being okay with what they have. By 2010, they dream of a car. Every family wants to have a car and an air conditioning. And by 2020, they're supposed to be the affluent middle class. That's the same phenomena which the United States when at, at a point in time for their consumerization, right? So that's, that's the segment that we are targeting. That's our consumer base. Now, what's the problem with that entire thing? Uh, it's a rapidly growing market. Last year alone, it was 2.6 million used cars which were getting traded. It is supposed to grow a 30% CAGR. It's going to be 8 million transactions by 2017. And all of this is concentrated just at 11 cities in India. That means 76% of these transactions are happening in 11 cities alone. Now the biggest problem of that, 89% of this market is with unorganized sector. That means there is no real information for these users to make any kind of decisions. They don't know how do we buy a car, what, do we, how, what, are, what is that we are buying, how do we make that buying decision, and that's where we come in. Uh, most of the issues are related to the data because the information systems are not there. You end up having uh, you know, duplicate cars, you end up having different departments within the governments referring to the same car with different identification numbers. You have claims which are not real and they are fake, so that means anything that is insurance company is telling you it is not necessary the car has gone into an accident because it's a fake claim. And in case, if there is an accident, the real insurance claim was never made. So the data, so the problem with that whole thing is, there is non-availability of data. There is not much information that is available for used car buyers to make a decision. There is a lot of unstructured data. Whatever data is available, it can't be easily correlated by an end consumer. And you know, the biggest problem is the data, that ever, whatever is available, is highly unreliable. It, it just can't be trusted at, at all point of time. So if all this is a problem, how are we going to solve all this in one chart, right? Um, so we said, instead of relying on many systems, we are going to talk to the car, right? We'll get into the gut of the car, we'll talk to the car, we get the data out of the car, and that's what we ended up you know, uh, working on. So what we do is, we take a car, we get into the systems of the car, use our instruments at various positions in the car, get the data out of the car, and bring it back into our information system. So that's what we call as process of talking to the car. How does this whole thing work together? There are three big pieces of our solution. First part is whatever data that you have available, that means any unstructured form of information which is available, it is being correlated by our algorithm. The second big part, which is talk to the car part, we have mobile kit. It is used by the experts to take it onto the car, they use various components inside that and bring that data into our data center. So these two pieces give us almost 200 plus data points. All these data points come into our cloud. It goes through our algorithm where we aggregate, cleanse, integrate, correlate, 
and drive an information from that for that end consumer so that they can make a more informed and intelligent decision about their purchase, which is going to be approximately three years of their savings going into buying that car, right? How do we make it happen? We try to keep it simple for an end consumer. It's just a three-step process. We, we call it 3i process. It's inform, inspect, and insights. Inform is a step when they come into our website or they can go into an app. They, they go to the site, key in the car registration number. We give them basic information about the car. But this is not enough for them to make an intelligent decision. They can't really decide based on this data, but they can always say whether this car is stolen or not. So they, they get the basic data. In the second step, uh, the person goes in with a mobile kit. They use the kit uh, to analyze various parts of the car. And we internally think of car being like a human body. It has a heart, it has a brain, it has fluids to keep it cool, it has fluids to keep it running. So every part of that needs to be analyzed and the data about that has to be collected. So in the second part, we, we use those devices to get that critical data out of the car and using our Android app, it gets uploaded into our Amazon cloud. Now moves into the third part, which is the insight. Since we have got all the information into our cloud, we run an algorithm to generate that intelligent report or insightful report, which goes to the customer, more like you know, giving a recommended uh, report. This is what, how our report looks like. It has four critical pieces for an end consumer to make that decision, right? Uh, we tell them what is the worthiness of this car. Worthiness we treat is very different than the price, although it has a bearing on the price, but we say whether it is worthy of you owning this kind of a car or not, right? The higher the worthiness score is, the price could be more. But lower the worthiness score is, we try to tell them it is not really recommended to have it. And remember, we are on current state analytics. We are not doing historic data analytics. So what do I mean by that is, we are not looking into few databases and just trying to tell you this is a good car and this is the scoring. We have really seen the car. We have collected the data from the car itself, right? So it makes it much more real, much more reliable for these guys. The second part is obviously the pricing because you know, all, mostly in developing nation, price is a very sensitive part. So we recommend them what is the price that you should be paying for this car. The third important point is how do you negotiate about it? It could be a buyer or a seller, but they can get negotiation tips on both sides. And the fourth part, which is recommendation, and that's largely uh, to tell them if you end up owning this car, what should you do to bring it to the original level? That means on an age matrix, can you still make this car best run for you for next five to eight years? Because mostly for a middle class family, they end up owning this car for a much longer period of time, right? Uh, all this happens just at $25. So we can make in this entire process work at $25, and that's what uh, we have done. Uh, that's the team. Uh, that's Sashi. He's, uh, he's a mathematician, or he's a, he's a student of mathematics, so he works on a lot of our algorithm, churning out value object engineering. That means how do we assign the worthiness scores and so on. Uh, this is me, Naresh Kanduri. I have I've been doing B2C solutions for almost 17 years. I've built a system for Nike, Best Buy. I'm largely a B2C guy. I understand how the, how the consumer system behaves. That's with Vic Badabial. He's our technology guy. Uh, he holds four patents at his name. Uh, we have filed patent for our solution. There is a patent pending state. And that's Santosh. He's a digital marketing guy. So he's the one who takes our solution to the market and brings the customers to us. Uh, this is the timeline B. It started about October last year. Uh, we worked with some of the agencies uh, to bring the initial part of data into the place. Uh, we tied up in June with 15 different partners in the, in the geography. These are the people who carry our technology and do the physical inspect part of it, so we really can scale anytime. Uh, in August, we went live, we went beta live. We have done approximately 500 customers, paid, unpaid, and we have done 100 plus customers from last month. Uh, who are in paid cycle. So last month we went paid live, and most of these customers are, I mean, they are paid customers now. Um, and this is what some of our customers have to say. Uh, most of them really like it because they get real deep insights, and what they really appreciate about it is we are not giving them a generic report. We are not giving them a report where we have not seen the car or any of our associates have not seen the car. We are not talking about the generic value of a car. We are not telling you, well, for Tundra this age this year should cost you so much. We are talking of a specific card, so that's what they like about it. Uh, most of them really uh, take that data and like the uh, interpretation of data data into their language so that they can make a decision. So we just don't give them 
the parameters, but we also try to tell them what does this parameter mean to you, right? How does it impact? Uh, the interesting part happened after we went. Team, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Hey, do you want to go? Yeah. Okay. Um, so um, there's one thing that I didn't get about this. Uh, so I'm a car buyer. Uh, is, is it a staff member of yours that's actually going out and they physically have to touch each of the cars and then do they go into a database? So, uh, so I lost some of the actual consumer mechanics here. Okay, so you go into our website and key in the car number. Our team member goes in uh, with a mobile kit to get the data from the car, so they'd really go and see the car. But we work now in, from this month onwards with our partners. So we have partners sign up in the cities who go and really get to the car to collect the data. So yes, we physically go there and connect the devices to get the data out of the car. That data from the devices is transferred into our Android application, which sends it to our Amazon cloud. Can I just do one more follow-up? How many used cars are on the market on, on an average day in India? And how many uh, can one person actually analyze and upload? So it's 2.6 million market as of today. It is, it is growing at 30% CAGR. Uh, whereas new, new car market last quarter was negative and, and quarter before that was 4% growth. So that market is stagnating. Uh, a given person can do approximately four cars in a day. And uh, we take around 90 minutes to finish the data collection from the car itself. Uh, rest of the data is, is more of software. So I mean, it happens instantly. Okay, so I almost have it. I'm <laughs> I almost got it, you know, following up on, on that. So so it starts with a person who is selling a used car. Well, why do you think nobody has done it before? Uh, in India, the used car market itself started exploding more of like two, three years ago. Uh, most of the guys who were owning the car, they were keep, keeping it for much longer time. So that it's, it's more of an economic curve, right? Now, we will change their cars every three years, five years. That's like when you make more money, you try to do it much more frequently. Now, the second uh, set of citizens, right, who are the middle class, they are more ambitious about buying the cars, but newer cars are still more expensive in India. So, I mean, the timing was just not right for the developing countries to do it. It seems like your operational costs will be relatively high, given you have to have people go and inspect all these vehicles. So beyond the $25 original report, do you have other means to uh, make revenue? Yes. So 25 was till this month, and next month we go segmented. And, and car, seg car buyers are very used to a segmented pricing. So A class, B class, C class, C plus D. So segmented pricing kicks in from next month. So I've got, I've got to, I need to ask another question since you went there, though. But when I consider what you said about the buyer might make four thousand to eight thousand dollars a year, if I did my math right, if they're at the lower end, it's about ten percent of their monthly income to purchase the report. Is that correct? No, four K. So they make four, yeah, four to eight K. So it's twenty-five dollars that they are spending on buying the buying the report. But the car itself costs them around eight K. So they have already have the savings to build up to that number. And then relative value that you pay for your 8K investment is not yeah, I, I was thinking of their monthly income. But, but my other question was more important, I think, for me. Just the other means of making revenue. Yeah, so uh, we go segmented. That's our next step. Then we go into car recommendations. And we are talking to companies who tie up back-to-back -back warranties with us, so warranty.co.in. We can, we can give them $300 and say they're here, then buy back, back on guarantee, but then you know, they, it has a more financial tie-ups working backwards from there. Because most of our customers, right now they are happy, but we know the next thing they're going to ask is, well, this is all fine. Can I bring it back to you if anything happens to it? So we're working through our network. Uh, Bosch, they're expanding 500 stores in India, and, and they are our, I mean, we're, we're going to get partners with them. If I were to buy the service and I pay the $25 to get the specifics on this car, right. would I still, as a buyer, want to do something by hiring a mechanic to take another look at it? Or do you think that your uh, analysis is as comprehensive as it needs to be in order to give me the confidence that I can rely on it? The second question is, what guarantees do you give people? Do you give them a one-year warranty, 90-day warranty that your analysis is right? Yeah. So first part is, 
uh, I mean, you have to be in, in, in context for some of that, right? While ecosystem didn't develop, even mechanics didn't develop in India. So they don't even know there are OBDs in the system. They don't know much about cars. So, so the instrumentation is very important to us. So even if you take a mechanic, when our guy shows up, they always feel he's much more equipped, much more gadget oriented, and he's not subjective. He's really objective about what he's doing. So that mechanic thing doesn't really, you know, we don't feel in competition from there. The second part of that, uh, we launched it last month. We are working on back-to-back -back guarantees. We know that we will have to give it to our customers that yes, you can bring it back to us. Right now what we are doing is, with both service centers, you get two services free, but you pay additional cost to it. So it's $25, and if you pay another $35, you get two services free for next six months. One last question. So I wanted to go back to the customer acquisition uh, process. Is there an option here to work with, with dealers? Because yes. there you could approach somebody who has a lot of cars on the lot and essentially put a you know, certification sticker that the car has been checked out and has yeah. some. Yeah, perfect. It's, it's like we are 12 years back of Carfax when first phase of it is dealers will hate us, second phase is they will be okay with us, and third phase is they'll say, why don't you certify my car? So we think we are, we are right there, it's just that the economy is that back and so everything is like relative scale, we are there. What is the capex uh, for this project? Uh, so right now it costs us around $800 to assemble a whole kit. The whole idea is when you go into a mass production, it comes down to 200 And uh, whenever we get the next round of funding, it is supposed to fuse in rather than using, right now we use 15 different devices inside a kit. It is supposed to be one kit which has various things coming out of it and then do it. Thank so you, Gene. Time up. Thank you.